Um, my name is Debojo Malupi. I'm a filmmaker, a writer, director, um, storyteller. And your latest film, Love and Broken Bones, how did that come to be made? It's quite interesting because I was I actually developed a script for quite a while that, that I was sort of thinking that was going to be my film that I was going to shoot. And, and then the following day before we, we went to go present it to sort of the funders who was DSTV, um, I suddenly had a different thought. <laughs> um, the, how the thought actually came to me was I was sleeping at night and then I heard this sort of melody, this trumpet melody that was this sort of maudlin sound that I couldn't sort of kick out of my head. And it just came to me sort of almost like a dream. Yeah. I'm going to try to say this without sounding too sort of mystical. mystical. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just woke up and this sort of sad maudlin trumpet solo uh, was sort of ringing in my head. And I took a pen and I started writing what, was, what came to mind when I was mm. hearing this tune. And that's in a nutshell, in a very sort of concise way, that's how the idea came about. So you um, changed what you took to DSTV? Then I changed what I took to DSTV. Yeah. Then I came into the office the morning, I went to my producers, Desiree and Angus, mm -hmm. and I said, guys, I, I know I've been working on this one for the last two months, but it doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. This one came at me, and I think it's dying to be made. So can I please make this one? And mind you, it was like half a page a synopsis. Yeah. And that's kind of what we had to go in with. <laughs> you, you know the old story about Hitchcock? That he mm -hmm woke up with this great idea for a film and wrote it on a piece of paper. Oh, really? Went back to sleep and woke up in the morning and it said, boy meets girl. <laughs> exactly. Well, at least mine was like a few more sentences than just boy meets girl. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how, 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 how the story came to me. And I guess once it sort of developed, it started becoming sort of layer and layer and layer, sort of peeling it off, peeling it off, sort of looking more internally to why did it come to me and why did I feel a certain way? So I guess how the film sort of evolved was sort of a process of looking internally on why that moment sort of resonated with me so much that I had to change everything. And so a, a big chunk of the story is, is sort of a, a personal um, depiction of my own personal life. And give us the story. The story is a story of a lonely debt collector who tends to be slightly violent and very mysterious. He falls in love with his latest assignment and through the process, his process, he kind of needs to learn how to love again mm. because he's kind of lost that. And so the sort of dramatic um, element of the narrative is him deciding whether he's going to continue with his job and collect money and be vicious and violent to this particular woman and child or is he going to drop everything that is known and pursue change his life and change his life essentially and pursue her and learn how to love so that's essentially in a, a in quite a brief um form that's what the film is about so how has it been released so it's quite interesting because the the initial idea, which was sort of a pilot project from DSTV, which is sort of one of our big, big broadcasters, it was sort of a pilot project to fund films, then take them to um, circuit, and then use that sort of circuit traction to run it on the TV screens for more, for more numbers. Um, at some point, I'm not quite sure what happened, but that sort of agreement with the distributors kind of fell through. Uh, and so the films got a national release on DSTV, on the DSTV platform, which is fantastic because that's easily a couple of millions of people. Of course, the way I approached it and the treatment and the look and feel was for a big cinematic release. Mm. So it was kind of a feeling, you yeah. know, kind of missed your chance. Kind of missed the chance. Um, fortunately, a few festivals around the world have picked it up. And I've had the opportunity to see it on like a big screen, big crowd, big sound, all, all around the world, like in Portland, like in New York. You won a prize in Portland. Yeah, and in Portland, we won a prize. I mean, there was more than 3,000 films that submitted. They showed more than 200 films, and I think about 30 were in competition from around the world. 
and um, we sort of we won the main prize, which was the, the grand jury prize for narrative feature film. So it was an amazing experience. I mean, when that moment when they call out the film and your name, after that, I actually don't know what happened. I think, I think something just came over me and I just floated throughout the whole night. Yeah. But it was an amazing thing. And since then, you know, this, the film has been showing in sort of different places. It's been showing at public screenings. Um, it's going to Zambia in a month or so. Um, that's going to get a proper cinema release in Zambia. And so, and so I guess it was an unorthodox way to run, to screen the film. But it's kind of a way that kind of worked. And, and finally, people will get a chance to see it on big screens and big sound. So what's your next movie? So, so the one thing, like I, as I mentioned earlier, that you know, after the the the, uh, the trumpet solo and the you know uh, this sort of compulsion to make this film, I started questioning myself: Why did it move me so much? And this film was part of that interrogation to try to answer that. And I got to the end of it, and I didn't quite feel like I had answered it completely. And so I'm still exploring similar themes for my next two narratives and for my next two films. So essentially what's going to happen, people are going to watch my next two films and they're going to feel like similar vignettes but with different characters. Mm. So now this next one is about sort of a, a bare knuckle fisted boxer in northern Limpopo. Um, so, 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 so my second film also explores similar themes of manhood, violence, um, violence in our society, interrogating what it is to be a man, and, um, and learning how to love again. My third film follows the same sort of vignette, um, the same sort of themes and subject matter, but within a different context. Now, I haven't quite, I've got about four, four subjects and four characters that have been developing for the third film. So I haven't quite decided which one to pursue. But what you can look out for is a similar theme, similar um, um, sort of narrative structure, and, um, uh, and similar interrogations in the third film. Why are you drawn to loneliness? Wow, why am I drawn to loneliness? Wow, that's a very complex question that I, I never actually I thought I about. I don't sense you as a lonely person. I guess I find it fascinating. Yeah. Um, because I, I actually I don't feel like a lonely person, um, but I find it, it it's, a, it's a subject matter that I've always found extremely fascinating. I'm drawn to, I sometimes drive my car and park on the side of the road and ask street kids if they're lonely or not. Yeah. Like there's one, there's a narrative, there's a story that I did of, of uh, it, was like a, it was like a little two minute clip I did on YouTube of this bookworm but who sits on the side of the road and he reads books. And I found him extremely fascinating because he said he's not actually lonely because he's got books. He doesn't actually have family. But he's not lonely because he's got books. I don't know why I find it fascinating, but for some reason I do. And I love putting it on, on, on film. I like filming. I like filming lonely people. Um, this, and, and, you know, I don't know what it is. I like just putting singular people in a shot, in a frame, and, and sort of trying to depict loneliness using frame camera movements and lighting and for me that's uh, i find it quite appealing and very emotive why i have no clue 